George Weah for me is uh, the miracle man, absolutely uh, outstanding man and uh, as well a guy who arrived in Monaco at 23, uh, known from nobody, who uh, became best player in the world, you know, it's absolutely a miracle for me. Miracle down to his outstanding attitude, to his great intelligence and uh, to his generous side. He's a, he's a great man. First African Ballon d'Or and then president of his country. George Weah is the definition of determination. A look back at the miraculous journey the Liberian genius has undertaken. But before that, subscribe to Megafoot, the best of football in video. George Weah was born on October 1st, 1966 in Monrovia, Liberia. From a very precarious background, he grew up in the Claritown slum, one of the most challenging in the region. Surrounded by his siblings and cousins, his grandmother tried to raise him as best she could. Young Weah quickly developed a passion for football. He started out on the waste grounds in his neighborhood before joining his first club, the Young Survivors. Spotted for his talent with the ball, George Weah joined the mighty Barol and then the Invincible Eleven, the two most prestigious clubs in the country. In 1987, at the age of 21, the young prodigy was transferred to Tonnerre de Yaoundé. He left Liberia and his family for the first time. These sacrifices paid off. Crowned Cameroonian champion after only one season, Weya was spotted by Claude Lois, the national team coach. Immediately impressed by his power, his technical quality, and his running speed, the French coach put him in direct contact with AS Monaco. In 1988, George Weya crossed the Mediterranean Sea to join the players of the Principality. There he met his teammates, but also his coach, Arsène Wenger who will play a decisive role for the rest of his career. His first season on European soil was a success. The young Liberian scored 16 goals in 28 games. Although he did not win any honors with his club, he nevertheless began to seduce the fans. The years went by and the striker continued his rise. In 1991, he won the French Cup against Olympique de Marseille. The following year, for the first time in the history of French clubs, AS Monaco reached the final of the Cups of Cups. Despite a fantastic run, the club lost the title in the final to Werder Bremen. George Weah couldn't swallow this defeat and decided to leave his club a few months later. His departure to Paris Saint-Germain for 10 million euros was one of the most spectacular transfers of the time. His arrival in the capital marked a decisive turning point in his career. In his first season, he scored 21 goals and reached the Champions League semifinals, a first in the club's history. Despite a goal from Weah in the first leg, PSG lost against Uwe and saw their potential trophy slip away. However, Mr. George had the opportunity to shine again in the European Cup. During the 1994-95 season, he achieved an exceptional performance by scoring seven goals in the Champions League. He was the top scorer of the competition and made a lasting impression with his memorable goal against Bayern. Even better, he left his mark on Paris Saint-Germain and added a championship, two French Cups, and a League Cup to his list of achievements. Despite this succession of titles, the new star decided to leave France to join AC Milan. During the summer before his arrival in Italy, he took part in Liberia's first qualification for the 1996 AFCON. When he returned to Italy, Weya quickly integrated himself into his new team and made a very good start to the season. He was the club's top scorer and was already an indispensable part of the Rossoneri. On December 26, 1995, George Weah logically won the Ballon d'Or. He was the first African player to win this award. Having reached the peak of his career, he continued to shine with his new team. He was crowned Italian champion in 1996 and again in 1999, and finished as the club's top scorer in his first three seasons. In 1999, Andrei Shevchenko arrived at AC Milan and considerably reduced the playing time of Mr. George, then aged 36. In the winter mercado, the Milanese star left his club to join the Premier League. Weah was loaned out to Chelsea, where he won an FA Cup and then a few months later to Manchester City. But like it or not, he is now on the decline. The player himself doesn't care. In the summer of 2000, the World Cup qualifiers began. 
Leia is the captain, but also the technical director of Liberia. He wanted only one thing, to take his country to the greatest of competitions for the first time. Unfortunately, he failed to qualify by just one point. But no matter, his last surge to the highest level was to come through France. Encouraged by his friend Marcel Dib, Weya joined Olympique de Marseille. His performances helped the club to narrowly stay in Ligue 1. Despite this great season, Weya decided to leave the French League to join the United Arab Emirates. He played a few games with the Al Jazeera club before hanging up his boots for good in 2003. A retirement that was only sporting since two years later, the man nicknamed Mr. George officially entered politics. Mocked by his opponents because of his social origins, George Weya resumed his studies at the age of 40. He obtained his master's degree in management in 2011. In 2014, he was elected senator of Monrovia and three years later, he won the presidential elections of his country. George Weya's journey is the result of unfailing determination. Starting from nothing, he was able to obtain everything he dreamed of. A tenacious man, but also generous and very talented. At 1.84 meters tall, he managed to combine power and vivacity. With his unparalleled technical skills, he was able to smash the top corner from the edge of the box. All these qualities make him one of the best African players in history. By the way, who do you think was or is the best African player in history? Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, don't hesitate to talk about our channel around you, to like it, to share it. See you soon for a new video. Ciao.